Good morning. Oh my God, I'm so excited and happy to be here again. We thank God for the grace to be here again. May God's name be praised in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We return all glory to your name. King of glory, we appreciate you. Thank you for the word of God that you keep renewing our hearts. Please be glorified, Jesus. Father, as we are here to pray, please join. Oh, sorry. As we are here to listen to your word, please, God, join us. Father, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the power of God. Don't let me speak words of my own. Father, Lord, I also am here to learn from you, Jesus, because this is your teaching. There is no other way, uh, any other name to call it than the teachings of Jesus. We all want to learn at your feet, Lord. Please put your words in my mouth. Teach me what I will say. Don't let me say words of my own. Father, Lord, please fill me with the Holy Spirit. Cleanse my heart. Everything that will not allow the Spirit of God to flow through me. Please let the blood of Jesus wash them away. Please take control. Please have your way. Take all the glory. At the end, let all glory return to your name. Let the Spirit of God and the Word of God going out. Please let you do what you are sending out to do. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Yeah, we thank God for bringing us. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm already, I'm already visualizing it that very soon people will be listening to me while I'm talking and, you know, <laughs> I'm very, very, uh, how do I call it? Visionary. I'm a, I'm a visionary. <laughs> I'm very, very visionary. So I'm already feeling like this is a church, like I'm speaking to a congregation, you know, I'm not speaking to myself alone, even though right now it's still looking as if I'm the only one listening to myself whenever I'm talking. Okay, let's assume that this is a recorded post. So, so guys, um, the Zoom meeting is starting in earnest. Please watch out for the flyers on my social media platforms. So, a few days I've not been here. What happened is that. There are other things God needed me to do. So I was tell, I was asking God, is it that God doesn't want me to come for all these things? God said, no. You must always have time where you uh, pray. So I was actually doing some personal prayers. Even my mom was like, I didn't see you online. I said, mommy, don't worry. I'm fine. Everything is fine. And this night, <laughs> you know, yesterday night I was actually praying this time. Around this time I was praying. I think I prayed till 4 a.m. before I slept off. But today, once I prayed till 1, the Lord said, okay, you can go and do what you have to do. So God was just telling me that I will always have time like this. So it's still part of the work. So the part of the work God is giving me is having separate time to go and pray. <laughs> Even though for me, I wish that uh, I can manage all the time in the whole day and... I do the prayers, I do everything, but God says it doesn't matter. So far, I'm progressing in it, you understand? So that was what happened. So it's not as if I was I was weak, I wasn't weak. Even though there was a time I was like, ah, God, uh, the food I was, you know, because I was recovering, the food I was eating was not giving me strength. But today I finally noticed that I've fully recovered and more than recovering, the Spirit of God has also filled me more to move forward. So, and we are moving forward this time with our Zoom meeting. Please join me. You know, Zoom meeting is not like YouTube where you can do video and people will come and watch it. It's Zoom meeting. People have to be there. Even though I'm going to be sharing it on YouTube, but I would really be glad if people can join me. Please join me. I'll be so glad. Thank you. So let's let's talk about today's discussion. The Lord gave me this topic yesterday night during my night prayers. Um, and what God has for us is the laborers have few. So, you know, we have started this, our Bible study. I'm calling it Bible study because we are really, really going into the Bible. We are not talking from the head. We are not like our New Age pastors. I just want to say things that will excite people. We want to say things in the Word of God. So we are going to start with our songs. We have two songs. Then we will read the Bible passage. 
and then we will explain how the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. Or let me say how the Holy Spirit leads me to say it. Because even me, I don't know what to say. But I know as soon as I get to that point, God will put his words in my mouth. But let's start with the song. So the first song is A Volunteer for Jesus. A call for lawyer soldiers comes to one and all. Soldiers for the conflict. Will you eat the call? Will you answer quickly with a ready chair? Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus, a soldier true. Or a savage. I'm sorry. <laughs> you see how many times I've been listening to this song. <laughs> I don't I know. I know. But it was that. It was that. Uh, uh, body I was really listening to. I thought I know this chorus. See what I'm singing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Am I being? Let's sing the chorus again. A volunteer for Jesus, a soldier true. Others have enlisted, why not you? Okay, I got it. Jesus is the captain, we will never fear. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? Yes, Jesus calls for soldiers who are filled with power. Soldiers who will serve him every day and hour. He will not forsake you, he is ever near. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus, a soldier true. Others have enlisted, why not you? Jesus is the captain, he will never fear. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? He calls you for he loves you with a heart most kind. He whose heart was broken, broken for mankind. Now, just now, he calls you, calling our sense clear. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus. A soldier true, others have enlisted, why not you? Jesus is a captain, we will never fear. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? And when the war is over and the victory won, when the true and faithful gather one by one, he will crown with glory all who dare appear. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus, a soldier true. Others have enlisted, why not you? Jesus is a captain, we will never fear. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? So, um, we are supposed to wait till after songs before talking, but let me quickly talk about this song so that we will not forget. So, I want to say something. Jesus Christ said, The laborers are few. So, He's calling, He's recruiting. So, I'm like, um, HR. <laughs> I'm like HR for Jesus. What is HR? Human resource. Human resource that that recruit people. I mean, what do they call them? Recruiters. So Jesus needs laborers. You know, I'm going. I'm still going to explain where this topic is coming from. So we are going to still talk about it. So God is calling people to His service. Then look at it there. He said, "A volunteer for Jesus." God is not like man that should volunteer to do something for him and then he will he will dupe you. Never, never. He will never do that. He will pay you in ways you never think of. He's going to pay you, but just have it at the back of your mind that this is a volunteering service. It's not for 
it's not for um merchandise it's no it's no uh it's no work of you do it they pay you no so just have it at the back of your mind that you want to work for jesus and you want your ministration to come from jesus i'm still going to tell you where this topic is coming from i'm going to tell you where where God gave me this topic, or why or how he gave me. But I'm just trying to t- to point out um, um, the line. <laughs> it might be, no? I'm just trying to point out the line in this uh, song. You understand? That I might likely forget when I'm singing... When I'm singing, I mean, when we are reading the Bible passage, or after reading the Bible passage, that's why I quickly said, let me quickly uh, talk about it. That it's a volunteer job. But even though it's a volunteer job, the Lord will pay you. He's not going to, oh my God. The Lord will never, never, he will never, 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 ever, ever cheat you. God is not. That is exactly why I said in one of the podcasts that God, God is not a gambler. Jesus will not ask you, bring 20, 20 pounds or $20 and then tomorrow it becomes $500. He will never tell you that. So he's not going to do that. But yet he will never cheat you. I remember some years ago when I was in Nigeria, whenever we go for our choir meetings, we will, they will ask us, Make sure you pack your place. Make sure you wash it. You know, even young people that are, that are young like me, they will leave their plates. I will pack it. I will wash it. And now a choir leader always tell me, you see this thing you are doing for God? The Lord will pay you. You understand? I, I will be left behind there. I will wash all the plates. I'm doing it for God. Nobody pays me for it. You know? And I also remember when I was younger than this, then... They will call us, you know, I, I told you I'm, I've always been a church girl. So after church, after school, we go to the church every evening. So sometimes they will ask us to come and walk in the house of God. Sometimes there are, there are bushes and then we go there, we walk. You know, many of my age mates, they don't do these things. And then I will do it with all my heart. Because I'm working for God. It's nowadays that people want to get money for something they are doing for God. But today, the Lord wants to teach us about how to work for him. You know, since I'm a nature, I'm a spokesman. I don't know what they call it, Sha. Like, I'm speaking for, for the company of Jesus. <laughs> I'm a spokesman that is recruiting people. That not, No, I'm not the one recruiting people. It's God that is recruiting people. But I'm like somebody that is explaining how it is. And I also want to tell you that there's one song, even though we are not going to sing it, it said, it pays to serve Jesus. How did they even sing it? Though? It pays to serve Jesus. I speak from my, he always be with us if we do our part. You know, these are the songs I grew up with, only to grow up and start hearing, bang, 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 ah, blood of Jesus. <laughs> I couldn't comprehend this. And I've, and I've not been able to, bring myself to that point to prefer such songs to these holy songs. No, I, I want these holy songs every time. So these are the songs we agree up with. They say it's pays to serve Jesus. He'll always be with us. You know, I, I said some things in some of the podcasts that I've gone. I said, when you are doing the right things, something will confirm it to your heart. Your heart will feel peaceful. You will, around you will be so peaceful. Ah, you know, you will feel good with yourself. So God is recruiting people. Let me say, Jesus wants people in a service. So we are still going to talk about those things you are going to be doing in the service. But at least I want to first of all tell us that it is a volunteer service. You are not doing it for money. If you need money, pray to God. He will lead you on other things you can do that can bring money for you. You understand? That was the same thing God God did for me when I was like God. Uh, when I was looking at other pastors, that when they pray for you, you pay them. The Lord said that is not how He does His thing. So, 
God is not how he blesses people that are working for him. And you don't have to merchandise it. You know, I was listening to one prophet. He said, uh, now that you have come to the church to come and pray and then come and collect child, it's not that you get this child and you go and take it to another place. So, see how I'm sweating now. You know, this is not the... This is not the call that God is calling us for. He said, freely you receive, freely give. Even when some a man wanted to buy the power of God from Paul the Apostle, he, he, he shunned him, he told him to get away. So that's one thing I just wanted to have at the back of your mind. If you are ready for this service, let's do it together. It's, it's God that is going to pay us. How he will pay us, we don't know. But he will definitely pay us. He's not, he's not man. He doesn't cheat. God doesn't cheat. He's not a gambler, so he doesn't cheat. So let's go to the second song. This second song, too, is also a powerful gospel song. May God bless us from all the songs in Jesus' name and everything and the word of God. Amen. Listen to the master's pleading. There is urgent work for all. If the Spirit is interceding, give this answer to the call. I am ready for service for thee, dear Lord. Yeah, am I? Send me. I am willing to be what you'd have me be. I will go where you want me to go. I am ready for service for the dear Lord. Here am I, send me. Though the pathway seems dark for thee, I'll do or die. I am ready for service, Lord. There's a voice to you now calling. Will you eat the earnest word? On the head is gently falling, give this answer to your Lord. I am ready for service for the dear Lord, here am I, send me. I am willing to be what you'd have me be, I will go where you want me to go. I am ready for service for the dear Lord. Here am I, send me. Though the pathway seems dark for thee, I'll do all that. I am ready for service, Lord. Many souls in sin are dying. It's to help them while you mean. For the time is swiftly flying. Will you now to Jesus say, I am ready for service for the dear Lord. Here am I, send me. I am willing to be what you'd have me be. I will go where you want me to go. I am ready for service for the dear Lord. Here am I, send me. Though the pathway seems dark for the I'll do or die. I am ready for service, Lord. Amen. May God accept our songs of consecration in the name of Jesus. You know, this is why I love this gospel songs. It's not, it's not trying to, or let me say this hymn songs, because I don't know what to call it. Now we have some other gospel songs. They are not, they are not um, inspiring, inspiring. They are just for the flesh. But this word of God, these songs, these beautiful songs, when you finish singing, it's in fact, something will shake in your body that, ah, God, help me. You understand? So this is this is what God wants for us. Not just a fake gospel song, one a big gospel song. God wants us to be fully, fully committed to him. May God help us. So we want to go to the where the Bible passage is coming from. 
Matthew chapter 9, from verse 35 to 37. 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Then 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. 37. Then said he unto it, Unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So that's where our topic is coming from. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Then 38 now says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So today the Lord wants us to come into his labor farm, his vineyard, to come and work for him there. You see? Hmm. All this word of God that I've been discussing, they are all interwoven. Yeah, I told you I was going to tell you where this topic came from. So a few days ago, I was on TikTok. You know, there was a time, I don't know. Sometimes my spirit would just go to one social media. So my spirit went to TikTok and I was really active there. I was commenting and I was meeting people. and So one of the people that chatted me, he had a private account and he was asking me questions about me. I don't have a private account. I have a lot of things on my on my posts. You understand? Like 100 plus posts. And then you came to my inbox with only one post. It's, his account was even private. I just tell him I don't chat with people who have a private account. Because I'm not a private person. So please don't. Uh, it will get me confused. I think you should move with people that are also private like yourself. So he has to open it. And I found only one post there. And I said, I'm a public person. I'm not a private person. Because if we, we are starting like this, and, you know, I will be I will be giving too much information to somebody who is hiding himself and who is, who is protecting a lot of things. Maybe he has child. Maybe he has kids. Maybe he has wife. I wouldn't know because none of it is online. You understand? So we talked to a point that he said, okay, what do you do? I said, I, I preach the gospel. I'm a gospel minister and I don't do rubbish posts. So he said I was harsh for saying rubbish posts. I said, I'm not being harsh. I'm I'm telling you that I preach gospel. He said, I said, you can check my post. He said, he has seen it. He said, then why are you asking if I'm being creative? Because he said, I need to be creative. That if I'm creative, I'm going to have people. I said, I work for God. I work I work for the kingdom of God. And I said, maybe you don't need people. I said, I need people. God is going to bring my people. You understand? So the conversation was just going on and on like that until I started thinking about it in the, in the aspect that you need to be creative. You understand? And I said, I'm working for God. It is the God of heaven who is going to bring people. You understand? And um, God spoke to me there that instead of people being unnecessarily creative on TikTok and social media, why can't we have people who are also working for God and then wait for God to bless you, to lift you up? There are some people on TikTok, like I said, I was on TikTok and I was really searching a lot of food. There are some people, when they are discussing, when they are talking, some is just um, dancing, dancing, you know. Some is just, uh, you know, so many things like that. Okay, let me, let me, some is comedy, some is, you know, things that don't even, some things, some things that some people do, they don't even make sense. And God was telling me, why don't you talk about people doing things for God? Why do, does he have to be crazily creative? Rubbishly creative? Why don't you talk to people that, let's do the work of God. And let's see how God is going to bless us. Because really, I'm telling you, people, look at that one of those songs, he says some people are dying in sin. And it's true. 
These our pastors are even making it worse. They will not condemn you when you sin. But when you don't bring money to church, they will say, Hey, you have sinned. Oh, this sin that you have committed is sin of a fire. Oh, but but when, you, when somebody is committing fornication, he's stealing from people, he's doing yahoo yahoo. You know, a pastor was even saying recently that yahoo yahoo people, they, they are going to heaven. That is like telling people that there's no problem to sin. Justifying sin. So a pastor that is telling you, that somebody that dupes another person, that lies to another person is going to heaven now. So what do you expect from that kind of church? Are you going to hear the true word of God from that church? God is not telling me, instead of people dancing crazily, dressing crazily, because some people, that is the creativity they are doing on YouTube, uh, on TikTok. Some people will dress crazily, they will do face, face crazily, just to... To appear like content creators and people should come and subscribe to their channel or something like that. And God says, people can do this work of God. And I want to tell you, do you know, it's just, it's just, I want to tell you something. If you are working in Microsoft, Microsoft, I think Microsoft is a company, right? Microsoft or maybe Windows, I think they are the same. Microsoft Windows, or maybe it's the same person that owns it, so I don't even know. I shall know that Bill Gates, Abby, is he not the one that owns it? <laughs> or a company like Facebook now. Okay, let's take for example Facebook. You know there are there are other tech companies in Nigeria. I want to use Nigeria as as an example, because I know there are many tech companies coming up in Nigeria. Can you compare the salary, the popularity you will get if you are working in Facebook as when you, as to one you will get in Nigeria tech company? You do the same thing, fine. But look at the popularity. So God is trying to tell me or tell us that if you are working for God, you are working for heaven, you are working for Jesus, the same work Jesus Christ was doing on earth, before he left, to put your feet in that shoes that you too you want to continue this work. I'm telling you, the same way Jesus' popularity goes far and wide, our own popularity too will also go far and wide like that. Because we are working for Jesus. You understand? So Jesus wants to recruit people. And I've also told us, number one, this company of Jesus, it is volunteering job. You are living the blessing for God to bless you. However, he's going to do it. It's his own work. In fact, if you are doing this work of God, the Lord can, because of that, bless your work that is supposed to make money for you. So the work of God is not, is not for merchandise. It is the work of how Jesus did it. You understand? It's a work of compassion on sinners, on souls, from going to hell. Please, let's come out and start crying against sin. It is another creative way. It's not only when you do, um, what do they call those? Filter. <laughs> it's not until you do a bad filter or, or face filter that is not good as you are being creative. This work of God is being creative too. I know it might look boring to some people, but Jesus is telling me that I should go and tell people that Let's come to do this work of God. Let's come. Let's come and teach people about this word of God. People are dying. They are dying in sin every day. Jesus Christ said he looked at them and they were scattered abroad like sheep without shepherd. That is why God is going to be very hungry with any any shepherd or pastor that has church and is feeding on this sheep. The Lord is going, not going to like it. David didn't feed on his sheep when he was a shepherd. Even when an animal or two animals wanted to take them, he, he took those sheep away from them. So, you are a shepherd. He said he saw them fainted because they are fainted. He had compassion because they are fainted and were scattered abroad. So, that is it. You must have compassion for souls. That is another thing you have to have in your, in your heart in this company of Jesus. You have to have compassion for the souls that are getting lost day by day. 
somebody that is doing yahoo yahoo you need to have compassion for that person so the person is is leading to destruction now i think that is the reason why god had to make me go through all these uh things i went through before now so that i can be able to explain all these things to people because really some people don't know but with the experiences i know that it is possible that some people who are passing through so much hardship that they think that is the end of the world if they don't go into this thing that we make money for them maybe they're not going to be recognized in the society it's not true you will be recognized in the society at god's own time god always has time it's not imagine when imagine that adam was somewhere when the world was without void and, and void and uh, without form and void you understand it would be like he called which day are you going to which day are you going to take me to the earth now how you have created me here since all these days it will be okay what will he be eating maybe he will not be eating he will not be doing anything and yet god god was preparing the place that place that god wanted to take him the place is without void and, and form i mean it's without form and void first day it's supposed to be light there second water source to go to where it's supposed to be grass need to grow for, so these are the these are what is happening many times when you say god i need it now god i need it now sometimes that thing you need now you need now there are a lot of forces around there that god need to fight for us before we have that blessing i've talked about it that we should pray until we receive but while we are praying make sure you remain on that prayer as you are not doing any other thing to forcefully pull this blessing to yourself don't listen to this fake pastors that are telling you that you need to make some sacrifice it's not true the only way god gives us to have our blessing is pray he said pray until you receive pray you will receive ask you will receive seek you will find he didn't say start making sacrifices jesus christ is the only sacrifice so that is another thing we have to put in mind in this work of this gospel you have to know that it's not for martial arts in obama then you have to know that it's volunteer job number two. You have to know that it's compassion job number three. Then you don't feed on the sheep number four. You don't feed on the sheep. You feed the sheep every time. You have compassion on the sheep every time. Don't listen to these fake pastors. And then you have to preach against these wrong teachings that is going on. You have to preach the truth of the gospel. You might say nobody will listen. Everybody is already listening to all these, all these fake people. Don't worry. That is why I said it is it is God's work. It's not our own to say uh, I want people to listen to it by force. No. He knows how to do it. The Lord can bless you. The Lord can bring people. She is Jesus. Everybody wants to meet with Jesus. Everybody wants to relate with Jesus nowadays. So that means there is a part of Jesus in everybody's life. So imagine everybody now coming to watch your video or coming to watch our videos. So the Lord is recruiting people today. He's saying that people can come to our light. But make sure you are shining the, the true bright light. He said you are, the, you are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. He said we are the salt of the world. Salt of the earth. You understand? So let us shine bright this light into the darkness. People don't like light actually. He said the people who hate light, they love darkness more than light because their work is evil. So that is why they like darkness. But yes, continue to shine this light. The Lord knows how to do it. One day, somebody can just say, ah, we already have a group of, of people, you understand? And they will just watch your video online. They will just stream it in their YouTube, uh, in, their, in their company there. And everybody will, will start liking it. Maybe in a place that there are 5,000 already. Imagine. And then you are, you are looking for subscribers every time, every time. You know? God has done it miraculously in his own perfect way by doing that. And then from there you become monetized and then small money is coming in or maybe later it becomes big money. You understand? So that's how God works. At that time, you didn't steal, you didn't dupe anybody, you didn't do rubbish to even get that money. You didn't go about uh, dancing, twerking on online or dressing naked or, you know, Let's do this work of God. Let's let's join. Let's join. Let's have compassion on souls. And another way of, of joining, you know, I told you that I'm only speaking and, and be a spokesman for the company. <laughs> for the company of the work of God. So another way of joining is you must be saved. You must be saved. 
and what do I mean by you must be saved? Just like that song that I was saying, I am ready for service for the devil and you were making a covenant. You will have to go on your knees and make a covenant that Jesus, whatever you say, I will do. You have to confess your sins. Father, I do this. I don't want to do it again. Please forgive me. You have to be truly sorry. You understand? When you kneel down and you want to start that prayer, the Holy Spirit will join you. Holy Spirit will teach you how to say it. But just have these few things I'm saying in my mind, in my mouth. Just have it at the back of your mind. Confess your sins. Tell God you are sorry. And you want to start living a life pleasing to God from men's fault. And you pray until the Holy Spirit confirms to your spirit that you are now a child of God. You understand? So another thing I also want to say is that a lot of churches today that don't preach this true gospel and are always preaching battles, 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 they are not preaching gospel. The Lord wants us to be preaching this gospel. Please let's join. Let's join this preaching of the gospel. And let's see how God will take us far. Farther than even people that are that are doing twerking and you know many of them their glory is just for a short while. Go and look at it. People that use breath, they are use body to to gain followers, to gain this thing. It's always for a while. The glory doesn't last for so long like that. But look at the glory of Jesus. Over two thousand years ago it's still shining. So now imagine you are now working for Jesus. It means our glory will go far away. There's no country where they don't know Jesus. But let me say there's no place. In short, Jesus has more followers. You understand? But why are, why are we still having bad, bad things in the world? Because people are not preaching the gospel. They are not preaching the true gospel. So Jesus wants people to come to preach the gospel. So if you are looking for something to be creative about, these things of God is a way of creating, of being creative. So after you are saved by the Holy Spirit, confirming that you are a child of God, there is an experience called the experience of sanctification. Sanctification is that experience that will remove the nature of sin from you completely. You understand? It removes the nature of sin. So it's like applying the blood of Jesus Christ again. Father, please wash me into blood. Remove, uproot the root of sin. What makes me to sin? You know, more, um, Paul the Apostle was talking about it. He said things he didn't want to do, he was doing. And things he wanted to do, he couldn't do. So it's the nature of sin that does that kind of thing. So salvation will make God forgive your sins and give us a new name. You understand? That's what I say. There's a new name written now in glory and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. So that is what salvation does. Sanctification removes the root of sin. It is that sanctification that when somebody slaps you on the left, it can make you turn the right. Normally, it doesn't mean that you are turning the right in real life. No, that's not what it means. It means that you still trust that person. You don't, you don't uh, retaliate. That is what sanctification does. The normal human, human being wants to revenge. But when you are sanctified, you, you let it go. That is what it means. That the person can even do it again the second time. And then you will still forgive again. Because the nature in you cannot sin. He said, he that is born of God does not commit sin. He cannot sin because he's born of God. So that is what sanctification does. Then after the experience of sanctification, there's an experience called experience of baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is when the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and now we can go out there and do the work of God. In the olden days, in the time of the, of the apostles after Jesus Christ left, once they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they, the urge to preach the gospel was always inside them. Nobody was making anybody their slave or, or serving under them and, and cursing them if they want to move forward. Nobody was doing that. Everybody wants to preach the gospel. And it's still the same thing. It's just that nowadays people are, are saying they are serving God, but they are not serving God. They are serving mammon. Some of them are serving mammon. Some of them are diviners in, 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 in uh, disguise, just using the name of Jesus to do miracles or doing church service. They are not serving God. They are not they are not worshiping God. But when you they put Jesus Christ in front of their name or they, when they finish their prayer with Jesus, you will think oh they it's a pastor, it's a prophet. They are not prophets. A prophet telling you you have to bring money for the prayer I'm giving you. It's not prophets. 
The prophet that is comparing what he's doing to Babala to Abali, saying if you go to Abali's house, are you not going to pay? That is not a prophet. That is somebody who is how will you be looking up to what Abali is doing to bring it to the church? When Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith, is it not Jesus Christ that should be directing us? Is it, is it us that should be that should be copying what the miners and sorcerers are doing? No, we should not do that. Let the world do it. Let those that are going to sorcerers, let them do that. But when we will come to the house of God, we don't need to do it. No need. No need for that. Just preach the true gospel. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit it gives us power for service. So and now does and the confirmation comes when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and then we can speak in new tongues. So you have to pray till it happens. But you don't receive the Spirit of God without experience of salvation and experience of sanctification. So so that the nature of sin can be completely removed. You know, the Spirit of God doesn't work in, in dirty environments. He works in clean environments. So the rules of sin have to be operated. So it's step by step. First step, salvation. Second step, salvation. Then third step, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And after that, we can, we can continue with the work of God. So that is it. And it's a way of being creative. So God is recruiting people. So And he continues to recruit people. Because a lot of people are dying in sin every day. The wrong gospel is, is propagating itself. So this true gospel, is, the Lord wants to propagate it in this end time. It's not only the wrong gospel that should, should be preached. And I'm telling you that if you join this group, you will see a lot of people will, will love it. It might look like, ah, they don't like it. No, they will like it. Because it's the work of God. May God help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the grace to be to know your word this morning. Lord, I'm so grateful for this opportunity you have given me, this grace you have given me to preach your word. Father, please be glorified. Father, please help us to surrender ourselves to you. Father, Lord, I have spoken your word as you have sent me. Father, bring people to yourself. Oh, Lord, please help me also that I will have compassion on souls. I will not be the tired. I want to feed on the sheep. Please help me. Please, God, help me to be a good shepherd. Help me to preach the gospel of Jesus. Please, the compassion that you had on people, please give this compassion to me also. Father, bring laborers to your vineyard in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Good night. Bye.